In each episode of this series, I will offer an applicant a blind choice of either a pleasant experience, a treat, or a darker trick. Following advertisements in the press, over a thousand people applied online. All were sent a card saying they were being considered, but none of them knew if or when they were going to be chosen. These are the people I've selected, they just don't know it yet. Welcome to Trick or Treat. Would you ever kill a kitten like this, for no other reason than you were told not to? Tonight a very sweet 19-year-old social anthropology student called Lauren is going to find out. Here is Lauren. Having decided we'd like to use her, we're secretly filming her to see more of what she's like. Aside from being a student, we see she lives at home with her mum and her cat. Her online questionnaire suggested to me a bright girl, eager to present a positive personality to the world, but with a tendency to be a little held back by self-criticism, a very human trait. I've created for her a scenario that will show her the destructive power of thinking negatively instead of positively. As with all the participants, I leave a few hints lying around for her to find or miss that she'd been chosen and that her experience was about to begin. In central London, we've taken over this deserted townhouse and spent the day converting it into a believable private clinic. It has to be convincing for Lauren, as she'll be visiting it later on. However, the entire setup will be staged and all the people she'll meet will be actors. We flooded the entire house with hidden cameras. Lauren was called by our office and told that all would-be participants had to undergo a standard psychological profile. She was invited to our fake clinic, believing she was one of thousands being interviewed. Hi there. Hello. Come through. She's been asked to bring a childhood toy with her, which will play a role later. Unknown to Lauren, this is all for her. I've got Lauren for you. Fabulous. Send her in. Okay. Thank you. Lauren, you go straight through. There you go. Hello. Would you like to sit down? What I'm doing is I'm going to ask you like a series of questions. All I can say to you is there's no wrong or right answer here, so please just be totally honest. So you're at university now, are you? And what year are you in now? We used the pretense of the psychological interview to speak to Lauren at length and find out if there was anything more she desired from life and what held her back. If I had 500 quid in my drawer and said, there's 500 quid for you, what do you think you'd do with it? Um, now I, I really want to learn to surf. Okay. <laughs> my dad laughed at me when I told him. Throughout the interview, I saw that whilst being an outwardly confident young woman, Lauren's answers confirmed that she had an innate negativity that was holding her back, despite the fact that on occasion she could be a bit of a hell raiser. I'm going to leave that with you and I'm just going to scoot out for five minutes and I'm going to come back and I want to see how much you've progressed with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just head over, pop over to the table. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm Darren, very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And uh, you applied to be on the show. I did. And we'd love to use you. You'll be picking a trick or a treat for yourself. Are you happy to play, first of all? 
You happy to play? Good. Then I'm going to ask you to sign your contract. If you don't mind. There you go. Uh, it just allows us to do anything we like with you. It's difficult to read the red writing and the red light, isn't it? Lovely. Thank you very much. Excellent. Um, so, depending on your choice of trick-or-treat card, we're going to leave through one of these two doors. That's unusual, because normally the trick-or-treat would happen at any point sort of over the next month, but yours is going to happen right now. Okay? So, I'm sure you know how it goes. You've got a trick card and a treat card. If you pick the one that says treat, it'll be something nice. If you pick the one that says trick, then it won't be. Give them a little mix. And if you'd like to choose one, please. Very good. Lovely. I don't want you seeing what it is, but I will have a quick look. And... Oh, jolly good. Excellent. Well done. Can you put that in your pocket without looking at it? Good. So, as I said, your trick or treat is going to happen right now. And because you picked that card, we're going to go through this door here. All right? Do you want to come with me? We'll get back to Lauren later. Tonight, Lauren's going to experience an extreme example of something called negative suggestion. Throughout life, we are surrounded by negative suggestions, and these start early in our childhood when we're told, don't do this and don't do that. The point is, the more we try not to do something, the more likely we are to give in and do it. Children are particularly prone to negative suggestion, and to show you this idea in its simplest form, I made a box that has a big red button on the front. We set the box up in a classroom we'd rigged with hidden cameras, brought in some midgety things to help out and told them not to touch it. You've got to guard this. It's a box with a surprise in. OK? Will you guard it for me? Don't look inside the box. Don't open it. So my negative suggestion there, don't look inside the box, is designed to sit heavily on their minds and stoke their curiosity. We can't look in it. Don't press that little button. You catch it and it will open. Catch me. <laughs> the idea goes round and around in their heads, and the more they try not to open it, the more difficult it is to resist. Oh, a hand came out, right? It was a right, physical so was... hand. Right. And I was so scared. And, and it hit me. And it opened the box. This rebellious urge to fight commands telling us not to do something is founded early in life and can carry on over into adulthood. Curiosity plays a role too. We wonder what will happen if we do the thing we're trying not to do and tend to give in because that childlike naughty urge won't go away. <laughs> Curiosity can indeed kill the cat. Lauren's trick or treat is about to put this notion to the test in the most extreme way possible. Just through those doors and uh, down to the right again. Just come over here for a second. So, do mind the cables. Uh, this is the main supply coming into the house. Here. Main supply goes to this box with our kitten inside. Uh, coming from the box, you'll see two cables here which go to this button here. When you press this button, it electrocutes 
the kitten. All right? It delivers quite a massive electrical shock to the uh, to the box, and uh, and kills the kitten. <clears throat> So, Lauren, your job is to try not to kill the kitten. If you succeed in that, there's uh, 500 pounds for you. Not to kill the cat. Zippo's Circus is the home to some of the loveliest people I've ever met and some of the most extraordinary performers. A high-wire artist knows the value of focusing positively at the risk of serious personal injury. And in the same way that the recurring negative thought, I mustn't lean too far over the edge, can make heights scary for many people, the thought, I must try not to fall, is precisely the wrong way to think 30 feet up in the air on a high wire, even if you're the world's best at it. Henry, how are we doing? Uh, fantastic, F amazing watching you, uh, watching you do your stuff. You're in the Guinness Book of Records yes, yes, yes. for skipping. skipping. With the re what is that, and what exactly is the record for? It's uh, the, the most skip in a minute on the high wire. With a rope? With a rope, skipping at the same time. So you've been doing this since you were 12, you're 27 now. Yeah. Have you ever fallen off doing that trick? No. no. So far, no. Love to see you do it again, thank you very much. And uh, what I'd say is this, I'm gonna go over here, don't worry about what I'm doing. Don't worry about any of that. You just focus on not wobbling and not falling off. I'd like you to go and do that again, OK? Just make sure you don't wobble and fall off. Brilliant. The instruction, try not to fall off, residently delivered, is amplified by the inflation of an airbag, as well as the pressure of me and the cameras watching. Henry's unconscious is, for the first time, thinking in terms of I mustn't fall off, which can only take him one way. Crazy. <laughs> it does uh, mess around with your brain up. You get this urge telling you always, jump, do it, go for it, go down, down. Then you go to the side saying, don't, stay, stay, stay. And, you know, it's, it's very hard, very hard. Tonight's participant, Lauren, was lured to an old London townhouse believing she was attending a psychological interview. Instead, we ambushed her and gave her a blind choice of a trick or a treat. I've now placed her into a highly emotional situation where I can bring out her childlike impulses through the power of negative suggestion. When you press this button, it electrocutes the kitten. It electrocutes the kitten. So, Lauren, your job is to try not to kill the kitten. To try not to press the button. If you succeed in not killing the kitten, there's uh, 500 pounds for you. If you don't kill the kitten. And please don't think that you can't kill kittens on TV and we'd never do it. There is actually something of a legal loophole. It has been done already four times on British television. This uh, will be the fifth. So I'm going to give you just over five minutes. And we'll start that, uh, we'll start that now. You've got a cat, haven't you? Yeah. Do you want a cup of tea, by the way? We've got some time. Um, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> I'd uh, try not to think about it for a bit, if I were you. Sorry? Best thing is just to uh, it'll take your mind off the cat for a bit. Although Lauren understands she must not push the button, which would result in killing the kitten, the embedded command, push the button, will start eating away at her. As we've established, children are far more open to negative suggestion, so I'm going to increase the pressure by regressing her back to a more susceptible time. There we go, sorry, is there any, um, any orange squash? Mm. Yes. But 
You've got two. Yes, I know. Annoying. Sorry, I've enough of one. I bet you won't want that one. Draw something for me. Come over here. Just a minute. Bring that. You can bring that with you if you like. Great. Draw something for me. Anything you like. Good, good detail. <laughs> cool. Um, did you bring a toy with you for the yeah. psychological test? What did you bring? I've got a dinosaur thing that they used to be in a TV programme and bought a teddy as well. <laughs> Which did you prefer when you were little? I can remember more about the teddy. What's so the teddy's name? Scriffy. Scriffy? I don't know why. It's a great name. <laughs> it's funny how those names just take you back, doesn't it, to, uh, to when you're that age? Just do me a favour, just close your eyes and just do that. Just use the image of Scriffy there to go back in your mind to a memory. A memory from when you were much younger. Preferably one when you were being a little bit naughty or a little bit mischievous. And when you've got something in your mind, just tell me what you see. Um, I'm tucked up in bed with a quilt over me. All the teddies are laid up next beside me. My dad's sat on my bed and taking different ones and making them talk to each other. And how does it make you feel when you think back and you remember <laughs> that? How do, how do you, how do you feel really as he's doing that? Pardon? Does he make you laugh? Does he make you laugh? Yeah. <laughs> and when are you most mischievous? I used to try and put makeup on. Yeah, it was all my mum's makeup. <laughs> and it felt a bit naughty, felt a bit mischievous? Yeah, because it was a grown up thing to do and I shouldn't have been doing it. And how is that feeling to you? It's exciting, so I've got these different colours and all these eyeliners and pencils and brushes and everything. Feels good, doesn't it? <laughs> Open your eyes for me. Draw me another cat. Oh, it's really lovely. You've done big pointy ears as well. Want to give it some whiskers too? That's lovely. Do you want to write your name at the bottom as well? Then we know it's yours. That's a really lovely pussycat. <clears throat> hmm. You got two minutes left. Excellent, that's two minutes, starting now. Good luck. Oh, and Lauren, whatever you do, don't press the button.
and face me. Look at me. Just close your eyes. Okay, so the first thing is this. You have not killed the kitten. The kitten's fine. It wasn't wired up to the box. So that's fine. You can relax about that now. It wasn't about the kitten. What this was about was a trap called negative suggestion that we all fall prey to. And what it is, it's that trap whereby we focus so much on trying to avoid being or doing a certain thing that we just end up being or doing that thing because we're focusing so much on it in the same way that you were trying so hard not to press the button that in the end you just had to cave in and do it. And your treat today, because it was a treat that you picked, Lauren, is that every time in the future that you find yourself focusing negatively, your brain is going to take you back to this very powerful and quite emotional experience that you've had tonight and it will zap you into a more positive and constructive state. And that's your treat. And of course, it was a treat. So mm -hmm. I'll have your treat card off you. Congratulations. <laughs> and of course, technically, you didn't kill the kitten, so you win 500 pounds. What are you going to spend it on? <laughs> I'd love to go surfing with it. Surfing with it? Fantastic. Thank really? you so much. Yep. Come, Silla. Hello. Baby. <laughs> He's gorgeous. He's lovely. <laughs> Enjoy your surfing. I'll leave you with Kitty. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> week's just been absolutely fantastic and the whole thing has just been an amazing experience. In each episode of this series I will offer an applicant a blind choice of either a pleasant experience, a treat or a darker trick. Following advertisements in the press over a thousand people applied online. All were sent a card saying they were being considered but none of them knew if or when they were going to be chosen. These are the people I've selected, they just don't know it yet. Welcome to Trick or Treat. <laughs> Tonight's applicant is Glenn, who we're secretly filming here. Glenn's a 40-year-old father of two from Essex. He's an aviation insurance specialist. He reads Stephen King. He loves Star Trek, regularly goes to watch West Ham, plays poker and hates heights. He considers himself of average intelligence, but says he doesn't have a good memory. And after monitoring Glenn and his life for several days, the idea for his ambush began to take shape. Glenn has come here today for a medical checkup. However, we knew where he was going and so got here a few hours before him. He has no idea what's about to happen. We've placed hidden cameras throughout the building and have also taken control of the lift. Now you applied to be part of the show. Yeah, I did. We'd love to use you. Thank you. You know how it works? I do. You're going to pick one of two cards. Right. One says trick, one says treat. If you pick the one that says treat, it'll be something nice. If you right. pick the one that says trick, it won't be. Do you want to play? I do. Excellent. 
First of all, you have to sign your contract. That allows us to do anything we like with you. It's difficult to read the red writing and the red light, isn't it? the one you'd like. My daughter would like me to go left. My left. Okay. I'm going to turn face the other way. I'm going to show the camera the one that you picked. Thank you, Glenn. You can turn back now. We'll be in touch. Having ambushed Glenn the previous week, I've invited him to join me at King's College Library in central London to discover what's going to happen to him. Surrounded by almost a million books containing the general knowledge of the world, this is the ideal place to get started. However, what he doesn't know is that the game has already begun. Well, look, um, sorry for the scare the other day, but okay. your scares are over now. You picked a treat. Fantastic. Your treat is going to be this. Uh, today's Wednesday. Yeah. Right. Next Wednesday, there is uh, there's something called the Night of the Champions. Right. And it is the pub quiz of pub quizzes. You're going to enter that competition. Right. On your own. On my and own. And hopefully, do very well. You're going to compete for the prize. And we have between now and then, for me to show you how to learn everything. <laughs> so you're covered. <laughs> what? Everything, everything ever. Everything <laughs> ever, pretty much. Now, take, take a seat for a second, because okay. I know... Um, I know in saying this, it can sound very daunting. Yeah. And just to demonstrate to you how much better your memory is than you probably think it is at the moment, you leave work in the morning about 8 o'clock, right? Yeah. And you make the trip from your house to Gidea Station. Gidea, Gidea Park Station. There's a cash machine that's just on the outside of that station that you there walk is. past to get to the entrance, yes? Yeah. Now, do you remember walking past it yesterday? No. No? But you just remember you did it in the sense that you, 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 you know that you did it, but you wouldn't necessarily be able to recreate the scene. There was a woman. What was she wearing, do you remember? She was wearing a red coat. So that's one of us and was part of the group that were watching you. The reason why we chose her and why she was dressed like that is so that she would form a, 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 like a marker in your mind. There'd be something, because I was hoping that you'd, you'd have a vague recollection of her. Right. However, if I said to you that up above the cash machine there was something different that isn't normally there, there was a sign that we'd put there with a word on. And if I asked you... No. You can't even remember the sign, no. let alone the word that was on it. Not all at right. all. If I said, just try and remember what that said... But I can't say that I actually remember seeing something like that. So, uh, close your eyes. You're coming out of your house, out you're crossing house. over the road, you are a little bit flustered. Yeah. So just run that forward in your mind until you start to approach the train station. And just in your mind, just pan up. There's a word on the sign, and as you look at it, just let that come into focus. You're not trying to remember what it is, you're just letting a word come into focus. I keep, I, I Go on. Strangely, I keep seeing the word shoe. Shoe? Yeah. Okay. What makes you say the word shoe? I don't know. What makes me say the word shoe? All right, fantastic. I want you to remember what that's like. We film Please it. Please don't be shoe. We film the whole thing. Take a look at this. This is going to really freak me out. Here you are. Do you remember this? No. Well, I don't remember that, yeah. They had no idea we were filming no. you? No. These are on very long lenses, so they're quite far away. Now it's going to cut forward to when you're approaching the station. Shall we slow this down? No, why? No, 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 how'd you do that? There she is. There that is. You didn't even look. What made you say it? I have no... How'd you do that? How did you do it? That's the point. When you tried to remember it, you couldn't. You put that effort into it, it just gets in the way. It stops it from happening. And what we're going to do with these books is the same thing. And the reason why I've shown you this is I want you to know that you can do this as effortlessly. And all it takes is that not trying and trusting kind of what I'm going to ask you to do. I I'm feeling like that's the most bizarre episode of my entire life. Fantastic. OK. I'm going to have to expand Glenn's memory capability so that I can teach him to absorb huge amounts of information. This is where you have to just trust me and do this technique because it will feel like you're not really doing anything. You take your right hand and you make this so that's right, uh, forefinger and middle finger. Is that comfortable for you? Yeah. yeah. And now you're going to start off probably fairly slowly, moving your fingers down at about that speed. Just do that for me. 
Now, the internet is bursting with speed learning courses, very few of which ever offer anything of value. I have my own techniques, which will allow Glenn to learn thousands of pages of information unconsciously, with no conscious awareness of what he's remembering. And sometimes that information may be stored as words, and sometimes as pictures. Straight down the middle, so everything goes in peripherally. As you get into it, you will not be consciously aware. The system sounds great, but it's of very limited use as the information fades away after a few days if it isn't reviewed. I know it's a mad, mad mission, but any questions before you start? No. no. I'm just going to go for it. Fantastic. I thought to myself, nah, this is not going to work, and I'm going to be making a complete idiot myself next week, coming last in a, in a pub quiz of Great Britain or wherever it is. Now, let's have a crack at it. Over the next seven days and nights, Glenn will have to view a phenomenal amount of facts and figures to have any chance of competing well against 150 of the top pub quizzes in London. Of course, there's no guarantee that the answers he'll need will be covered by the information in these books, so all we can do is cram in as much as possible. If we can do this, then it'll be, it'll be some achievement. <laughs> One of the techniques I've been showing Glenn is an extension of what some people refer to as a photographic memory. To demonstrate what Glenn will be taking on, I've invited James Hoffman, who was World Barista Champion as a leading coffee expert, to help me spill the beans. If you can take maybe three big scoops of coffee and pretty much cover the tray okay. with beans, I'd like to try something with that, so I'll let you do that now. Perfect. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Let's leave them as they are. Would you uh, pick one out? Pick a bean, any bean? Lovely. So, if you can mark your bean, that would be perfect. Okay. Uh, if you could maybe turn it over, mark the other side of it. And it can be anything you like a cross, a dot, two dots, your initials, anything you like. But something so you'll definitely recognise that again. Very nice. A little cross. There you go. Good. Good. While that dries, I now have to memorise the order of the beans that are on the tray. Um, so give me a second to do that. And just keep half an eye on your beans, you know, I'm not going to uh, flick the bean off or anything like that. Uh, that would be a first. Okay. What I'm doing is taking a series of mental photographs. Oh, okay, just do it. I'm going to face the other way. Okay. You're going to place your bean somewhere on top of the, the beans in the tray. I'm going to place it with a cross on the underneath. Yeah. And I will look the other way, please keep half an eye on me so you know I'm not going to, I'm not going to look genuinely, I, okay. I can't see. Okay. 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 Are you happy I didn't see where you put it? I yeah. genuinely didn't. All right. Okay, it's not there. All there. There are 1,347 beans in that tray, and you're more than welcome to count them, but I'm only going to give myself one shot at this. And I think that that bean there is your bean. Come in. Okay. Turn it over. Very good. Show the camera. I'm impressed. Excellent. You can't really cheat that. So yeah, absolutely. Pure memory. Impressed. This technique of memorising a complex pattern of coffee beans is similar to the principles I've taught Glenn to snapshot the huge mountain of facts that he needs to compete successfully in the pub quiz final. I can't really know everything in these books, can I? Glenn now only has three days left before he has to compete in the pub quiz Night of the Champions. He's following my techniques rigorously and we continue to monitor his progress.
Glenn will have no conscious memory of anything that is learning. That's the only way I can make room for the huge amount of information that has to go in. However, after a week of intensive studying, I felt he needed a little boost in his confidence. We met up, and Glenn brought with him a selection of the books he'd been absorbing so that he can test for the first time whether the system is working or not. So talk me through what you've been doing over the last few days. I've been looking an awful lot of books. Just to let you see that you do know more than you think you know. Um, is it one of the books that you've read? Yeah. Yeah, it's a book on art and artists. Yeah. It's a... Uh, Encyclopedic volume looks like it's part of a it's part of a set. I'm going to ask you a question from this. If you tried to work out the answer, you probably wouldn't be able to get it. You'd find that very difficult. So I don't want you to do that. What I want you to do is to imagine that the answer is coming somewhere from the back of your mind, where you've had no conscious awareness of any facts at all. From somewhere in the darkness, something will come forward. Some images, some ideas, which you're going to piece together to form an answer. Worst thing that happens is you're wrong does not matter at all, okay. all right? Um, so if I asked you, for example, uh, the Camden Town Group, which is a group of British painters, they formed in 1911. Uh, they held uh, an exhibition somewhere in London in 1911 to 1912. If I asked you where that was. Carfax House. Hey! Carfax Gallery, London, 1911 to 1912. So, what made you say that? Just, I could see a car. All I could see was a car, and it was, it looked strange. Yeah. There was something about it. Yeah. And I could see something coming out of it, and it looked like a fax machine. So... So you went Carfax? Carfax. How would I know that? Don't tell me I know everything in these really books. <laughs> I mean, I can't really know everything in these books, can I? Uh, no, surely not. I don't want to do this too much. Let's just do. Uh, let's just do one more. Amazon rainforest. How many different sorts of hummingbird have been recorded in the Amazon rainforest? Three hundred and nineteen. <laughs> no. <laughs> right there. Right. No, I certainly can't know that. How do I know that, Darren? Bird life is even richer. More than half the world's total of 86,000 species thriving in the Great Green Sanctuary. 319 different sorts of hummingbird alone have been recorded. How does that feel? Scary. I can't. I've taken everything in. Don't even try and work it out. OK. Right? Just take it on board. Great, I've got it. Take no. whatever encouragement you can from that feeling of astonishment that you have at the moment and then just let it let it take you forward. And so, after only one week of looking at hundreds of books, thousands of pages and millions of words, Glenn's arrived at the Night of the Champions, where 150 of the brightest brains have gathered to compete for the coveted prize of Pub Quiz Champion. We're the missing links. Uh, the Toucans. Five, Five dogs, dogs and one fox. We've won six out of the last seven that we've done. Good questions. They're always yeah. good questions. I'm definitely going to go for winning. You don't quiz if you don't think you're going to win. Although everyone knows we're filming for a TV show, they don't know that it's mine. So I have to hide in the pub garden, in the cold, to talk to Glenn in secret. Glenn's turned up with his wife Jane for moral support. So I, I gave you some techniques as to how yeah. to kind of access the information. Like, it feels like there's a huge room in my head with lots of drawers, lots of places to hide things. I've got a fair idea of how to go and get the stuff. Yes. Hopefully it's just going to come. Jane has been told not to talk to Glenn or react or do anything that might help him. The questions have been set by Andy Burns, one of London's most experienced quiz masters. I've had no contact with him, and as with all the teams, he doesn't know that I'm involved. There's lots of smart people downstairs who've been quizzing a very long time, and um, who I, I guess are expecting expecting something tough, they're expecting the best, and I think I'll put something together that would really test them. The teams are made up of between four and six of the brightest people from their area. Glenn is the only person tonight entering this quiz alone. Event on the, London pub quiz the quiz pub comprises 40 questions, and Andy, the quiz master, is the only one in the room who knows what those questions are and what subjects they'll be covering. Glenn is clearly nervous and still has no idea if the speed learning I've taught him will be enough to answer whatever questions are asked. Let's get this quiz underway, ladies and gentlemen. This is it. Question one, what is the middle name 
of the current US president. What is another common name for the scarab beetle? I'm not positive for scarab beetle. I had a picture in a scarab beetle, but I can't decipher what the picture means. When Big Ben strikes five o'clock, how many seconds delay is there between the strikes? In fencing, what do you call the resultant fight off when there is a time? What is the currency in Lich? Is the equivalent of Venus in Greek? Many weeks for the moon to complete a revolution. <laughs> I just can't work out where, where I knew that. They're all coming to me like pictures, OK? All I can see is a quick picture in my head. It's like, bang, picture, it's gone. Who's got all three of those? Which club that is currently not in the Premiership has won the most number of league titles? In the year 1992, which English town became a city? How many of Henry VIII's offspring ruled England? Before 1972, what was Sri Lanka known as? What animal, when they gather together in a group, is known as a flange? In which US state did man first knowingly drill for oil? Which Russian word literally means what is the more common name for the Volstead Act? In biblical etiology, which animal became extinct because it was thrown off the ark and drowned? Now what happens is you finish off the answers on your answer sheet and you swap your sheet with an opposing team. And then... We are going to find out who has won the 2008 Night of Champions. Here come the answers. What is the middle name of George Bush? It is Walker. Yeah. What's another common name for the scarab beetle? The dung beetle. Yeah. How many seconds delay is there between a dong on Big Ben? The answer is five, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. In fencing, what do you call the resultant fight-off when there is a tie? It is known as a barrage. Yeah! What is the currency in Liechtenstein? The answer is the Swiss franc. Question yeah! number nine. The answer is Aphrodite. French. Question number 11. The answer is four French. weeks. Which current non-premiership team has won the most number of league titles? Sheffield Wednesday. Which English town became a city in 1992? The answer is... Sunderland. Sunderland. Until a week ago, Glenn's life revolved around his work, his wife and children and his football. Since then, he's taken a leap of faith and has given up all his spare time to throw himself into a seemingly impossible mission, all for this one night. Prohibition. Please put the final score in the box provided. The final scores are being counted up now, and if Glenn has been able to hold his own against a huge room of seasoned quizzes, it'll be an amazing personal achievement for him. The results are in, ladies and gentlemen. From bottom to top, we've got a team called One Night in Powys. Moving up, we've got a team called More Luck Than Judgment. Red lorry, yellow lorry. When Darren first told me what I was going to be going through, that was just something a million miles away from where I thought I could be. The two cars. Team quiz team hidden talent. I know it's a mad, mad mission, but any questions before you start? No. no. I'm just going to go for it. The sharp six big thistle sticks. The dynamo devilfish. Pick a Dave and the disciples. Don't tell me I know everything in these really books. <laughs> I mean, I can't really know everything in these books, can I? 30 points is the missing links. 32 points is 40 beige. The old process has been an absolute a remarkable experience and something I wouldn't swap for any other experiences I've ever had. 33 points is just glad. <laughs> It's a dead heat for first place, ladies and gentlemen. And so, after just one week competing on his own against the best teams in London, Glenn has achieved the second highest score of the night. Hey. It's difficult to describe exactly how I feel right now because I'm just an ordinary guy with an ordinary background, been taken out of that, put into 
something that I'd most probably never do uh, and I've done well you know and, and if I can do it most probably everybody can do it and some of the techniques I've been taught um, they were remarkable and, and obviously they've worked because I wouldn't be standing here with a bottle of champagne in my hand.